you know what, we can do that through the demo. We can pause and, and explain these points. Perhaps I don't need to worry about this right now. Uh, what I might do is just share my screen quickly just uh, to look at the agenda and then we'll hand it over to, to Sung. So yeah, just, just let him know five minutes. Okay, so if you can see my screen, guys, um, is it large enough? Can you guys yeah. see it? Yeah. yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do is, what, what I've been doing, talking about how it works, it's really important when someone says, look, it's going to cost you $40 or it's going to cost you $20 or it's going to cost you $55 or whatever that is. It's important to know who's doing what. That's really what I want to focus you on. And I've given you two examples and maybe there's at the two ends of the spectrum in a sense. One whereby a provider like us, you're just saying, here's the candidate, here's the context and get me the result. That means we are doing everything, including the major step of ID in the candidate. That is very significant and very costly, as opposed to on the other end of the spectrum where you are doing all this and going into the, uh, you have access to the MPCS uh, portal and submitting the request and the MPCS guys will send you the report when it's done. Um, and that would be the cheapest from the direct cost, but then it's the cost of IDing, the cost of the HR folks or the people at, at the company, whoever they might be, who are doing all the IDing and and um, communications with the candidates and and actually, you know, the, the work they need to do with MPCS and all that. So just want to make sure you take that into account, into context when we are talking pricing. That's all, guys. Um, in saying that, we... Uh, we will discuss the pricing, but perhaps we'll do it after the demo now. Uh, I just wanted to bring to your attention uh, those various, um, if you like, uh, models when it comes to uh, this product. Um, and then we will talk about the contract. If you'd like to use the uh, this, this product, you have to sign a contract with us that ACIC had approved. Um, um, it's all mostly about handling the privacy uh, aspect of of this data you know the results and all that stuff uh, to make sure that you're compliant and and we we take responsibility that you you've signed the contract uh, and therefore you understand your responsibility towards the privacy aspect of it then we we'll talk about the pricing model and there's a special discount uh, for early birds uh, sign up to the product so that's really the agenda today uh the developers are going to be doing demo not myself just because uh, the product is not ready in the production environment, still in development environment. Um, the first check that we will be uh, conducted, that will be sent to a client, will be by uh, one of our clients' agents in Perth, and that's expected to be on Wednesday next week, Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. So next week, the product will be live, uh, which is very exciting. It's been three years in the making. Uh, not necessarily full development uh, in the last three years. There was about a waiting about a year in total or a year and a half on legals and uh, three federal agencies we had to become accredited with. And there was a, a lot of a lot of legal and, uh, you know, partnership, if you like, um, agreements that need to be to go in place before um, we could have access to the technologies and to the APIs and all that. But nevertheless, it has been a journey. and We're really, really excited about that. Was there any question, any uh, poll or something that we normally do? We did that as you said, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so let's uh, get started with the demo then. I'll stop sharing. That's awesome. So guys, um, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm not sure probably a lot of you um, uh, is using the reference check and this works in the same way. And in the sense that you can um, initiate it from multiple places. You can do it during the recruitment process. You integrate it, you embed it within the recruitment process as a stage, and that's what that is. Um, or you can do it from the employee record or the candidate record without any context of a job in the sense like as in recruitment job, um, what I meant. Or you can do it from the dashboard. There is a dedicated dashboard to your to all your police checks. And you, from there, you can go, I want to start police check, select the candidate or the employee and keep going. So a few places, three places to be precise, uh, where you can initiate the process from precisely like the the uh, reference check. And the way you uh, you link it into or add that stage into your recruitment process works in the same way. You go to the cogwheel, you add uh, a stage, and then you say, I want to link a, um, 
an automation to it. It shows the police check automation. Right, Sam? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Let's not. Well, you may as well demo that. Just add a new yep. station and then delete it. Leave this one alone. Sure. Just um, because you're going to need it. Click this. Let's start the Prime Minister check. Click on this. Click yes. And that's it. That's how you add an action to stage. Beautiful. That's it. So that will understand what needs to happen when you move someone to that stage. It understands what it needs to do. The automations will be built in. Beautiful. Okay, so when you're ready, uh, if you don't mind, let's continue now. So we are now in the process of recruiting for a particular job, and we got to a point uh, in the recruit process with this person, what's their name, Fred, and we want to now send them an invite um, uh, or a request to, uh, you know, um, for them to to go through a, the police check submission in the city. Mm -hmm. So this page comes up when you move someone to that stage. And this collects the information about the context, because when we um, when we're communicating with the candidate, we need to let them know about, look, uh, this company, which is you, the, the client, uh, would like you to conduct a police check or want to conduct a police check for, for you and uh, for the purpose of employment versus, as I said, volunteers and uh, at this location and this job. But also eventually when we send information to ACIC via the NPCS, we, they also require context as well. So that's what the information is. But the good news, it's all there. Because we know the candidate, because we know everything, you really don't have to do anything. Right, Sam? Yep, correct. So it's all pre-populated, although you can override it if you want. Yeah. So the only thing in this case I have to choose is this combo. Um, individuals, I just know the combo. So, so this is about the working with vulnerable individuals, yeah? Yes, correct. No cool. no contact with vulnerable individuals. You just selected that. Uh, yeah. it, it shows that, yeah. Correct. And just as you're doing that, we just had a quick question from Jesse. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to do a volunteer check as well? Yeah, that will be coming up very, very soon. We started with this. It's a separate contract with ACIC, or, and we did not want to you know, get bogged down with that. But I reckon by july at the latest if not even a lot earlier uh, not really much of a difference just the contractual thing it's a it's more of a legal thing we need to sort out with them and then we will be able to use it the, the tech is all there okay cool good question thank you okay so i'll go to the next step and this email template that we're seeing so that's a preview of the email that will be sent on uh, um, um, pretty much on your behalf to the uh, uh, by our platform to the candidate. We're just making sure you're comfortable what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And Sun, can you make any edits on the fly to the email? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, okay, good, good. Just wanted to to, to make sure uh, uh, that we can or understand how it works. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Perfect. Let's keep going. Send. Send. And, and while you're here, some maybe perhaps just explain that thing that popped up in there. What tab are you in, and what's that entry that just popped up? Popped up for Van Driver. Oh, this 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 tab. Yeah, yeah, that that entry in there. I can see Van Driver in there. What is that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I'm very really sorry. Uh, no worries. There's a a row. There's a record in that tab. Oh yes, sure. This is the check I just created. Um, so this tab is where you see all the. Um, the police check has been sent to um, this candidate, uh, this application, and this is the very check we just created. So it shows the status. Okay. The name of the job. You can click when, on it. Got it. Got it. So beautiful. It so whenever you send, because we sent it from the candidate record from the application, so there's a tab. Is that right, uh, um, Sung? We created a new tab under the candidate slash employee record called police check. Is that what it's called or? I can't see it. There's something the, the 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 webinar program that we're using is going over the name of the tab. What's the name of the tab? Box? It's called Martian Checks. Oh, I see what you. That's why the confusion come in. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, called yeah. Martian Checks. Yeah. yeah. And then Bobby, it's Bobby's just asking. That's the role designation. He's assuming. Uh, the role designation. Uh, you mean the van driver? What's the yeah, role? Van driver. Yeah. yeah, that's the the position um that Sung decided that uh, he was using as a test uh, data van driver is the position 
Um, and this is coming up under the Martian checks tab in the application. By the same token, uh, so this is, you know, to keep you in touch with the status of the check and eventually the report will be attached against this entry, yeah? But also this entry will be available under the candidate slash employee record as well as in the um, uh, the dashboard. Sam, do you want to go to the dashboard? Mm -hmm. So that's criminal history. Um, and, and, and all your checks will be here and we'll create some powerful um, filtering capability here for you and stuff like that to, to so you can quickly, uh, when you come here, you understand where your checks are at, the statuses, et cetera, how many completed, how many with the candidates, how many with the Martian team, how many with MPCS, you'll be able to very quickly understand all that filter and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you're ready, Sung, if you don't mind, go back and continue. Yep, now I'm gonna continue as a candidate. Um, by the way, this is the example of image, the email they're gonna receive. So I'll just click start. Oh, we can't see it. Uh, we can't see that, Sung, maybe you're not- Oh, sure. crap, I'm so sorry. That's all right, mate. Maybe you wanna change the way you do share. Oh, okay, now we can. Yeah, sorry. So this is, so I just opened up the link I received from the email. So this is the very first page the candidate will see. So they received the email and they clicked on the button that says start or something. Yes, correct. This is, and the, this email. is the, page. Got it. That's the email. Got it. Got it. And then before we get them into the portal, we're doing a two factor authentication. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So let's like this. So go into the candidate's email, get the code and I can now start the check. Mm -hmm. I should do full screen, make it cleaner. This is the first page where we haven't created that content yet, but we're thinking of having a video in here that gives them a probably no more than 30 seconds. We don't want to, you know, get people lost in here. They get busy and they forget to continue with the whole thing. Probably 20, 30 seconds walk through to just show them it's really not that daunting. It's pretty quick. We just need to collect some information from you and a, a few documents. Um, and then we keep going. We don't have that content yet, but that's what that is, just information or, you know, um, education, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so this is the first page of collecting their data. Yeah. Most of them are pretty much pre-populate, like their first name, last name, their mobile. Um, all of this is pretty much pre-populate. Then fill out their gender, so male. So we pre-populated their name, last name, because we know what that is. Is that what, what we're looking at here? Yes, correct. Okay, great, which is good. Yep. Um, so thing, three, nine, nine, nine. Plus your birth, approve. Uh... This is, uh, um, the, the, the place of birth, guys, is, um, proper geolocation so they don't have to type all the different parts you know the uh the town and and the state and the country and the blah 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 it's pretty quick and and coherent yep uh, that's all done this is all pretty much um pre-populated so i can pretty much continue mm -hmm. although yeah cool continue these are previous names um uh, if they ever happen to have previous names, they need to provide it as well. So add new, choose a type of previous names. So I can be alias or maiden or previous. Click that, say, um, John Smith. Then there'll be, be previous names, as many as many as they have, pretty much. And uh, we, we uh, some one of the things that we still need to do is with the previous names to, uh, to to make sure they attach a certificate if if any of the documents are different. Um, okay, guys. So mm -hmm. we are now uh, we're that's sort of the second screen, which is the previous names or the second you know step in the process. The that the candidate is going through. Yep. Um, the previous names, and let's keep going to the next one. This is the current address, and we have to collect. Uh, the addresses over the last five years without any gap, right, Song? Correct. Okay. So we make sure this data is all coherent. We do checks based on the dates between, you know, A and B and then B and C. We make sure there's no gaps. We are Correct. responsible to ensure we've collected all these addresses over the last five years. 
So it's all built in, all the checks. Correct. So if I just provide 33, 39 Hunter Street from 2022, clearly that's less than five years. So you won't let me process, but proceed. So I need to provide previous ones as well. So let me put another one. Let me say then Piemont Street. And so up to that date, I need, can provide um, let's say then 2015, something like that. And and that will add up to more than five years. So this would give me five years, this would give me four years. So then I can continue. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll continue. Now this is the document part. We need to collect a total of four documents from the candidate. As you can see, one from commencement, one primary using community documents and two secondary documents. Um, so we're just explaining to them that you're, this is what's about to happen now. We need to collect from you four documents. Correct. Cool. Continue. Um, so the very first question will be whether they have an, a passport in Australia or, or something. Um, I'll choose the first option for the demo right now. So just stay there for a sec, just yep. so we can explain the four, the three options. Mm -hmm. so it's either an Australian with passport or without a passport, someone who just happen not to have a passport, a current passport, um, or uh, it's not an Australian, but they have a foreign passport. These are the only possibilities that we can work with. Mm -hmm. And for the purpose of the demo, Sung is going to choose the top one. Thanks, mate. Cool. Keep going. So I need to provide the details for the passport. I put John. Name that and upload a passport. Uh, what does the uh, barcode do? The uh, the QR code. Good question, Anwar. So I can either upload my passport through from the desktop, or I can scan this QR code with my uh, mobile and upload it from the mobile. Okay. So you, the upload, if you have already a, an image, a, you know, a, a, a picture taken of your passport, you're ready to upload it. Otherwise, you can interactively live, just scan the QR code, it will switch to your camera on your phone and you can take a snapshot live and it will we'll upload it for you. So it's very, very convenient. You guys using the same thing, probably a lot of you using the compliance fields, we use the same technology. here. So just to, it links your desktop with your phone mm -hmm. to, be, to make it convenient to take the photo. Or if you have the image already sitting somewhere in your file system, you can just select it from that. Very good, let's do it. Okay. So good now, and it needs to verify. For the demo, it just verifies straight away. Uh, but if it fails, it will fail and they have to sure. redo it. So with this step, uh, Sung, is it or is it not correct that we are um, actually using the uh, the government DVS database to validate that there's a valid document with this ID and 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 uh, uh, dates and etc. Right? This correct. Correct. We we are doing DVS at this step. Correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. So it's been verified. We'll continue, and then they will have to provide another document. Uh, I'll just choose Australian driver license. It's pretty usual. Um, you will have to provide both images. And back. Uh, that's a good question, Danny. Um, will the system pick up if the candidate hasn't scanned the passport correctly? Um, the this will happen in the next step. You will see it, Danny in a minute, um, because we even have to link the photo of your, you know, live uh, from from your face, pretty much from the live selfie into that photo as well and we verify the authenticity of the document and we make sure it's still valid also in the government we do the three things that will be coming up in just one minute yeah um right now i'm just uploading a my secret document you haven't right now we have two but you will have more options so you choose two of these options and then as usual you just upload them um, and when, once you're happy with it you can continue now, this is a step that Amal was talking about. Um, this is the live uh, live biometric authentication or uh, you know, um, verification. Yes, correct. 
Um, it's not loading, Sung. Is that correct? Or is oh, it? just bear with me. No worries, man. Let's go back and try again. There you go. Okay. So we use a partner called Jumio to provide this function, the biometric authentication. It's world-class, it's the best out there. It's amazing actually how it works. And this is the step that you're welcome to uh, experiment today yourself. You can use it, you'll see in a minute. So the candidate will just have to tick that consent uh, to make sure they are okay for Jumio to be processing their data. They don't store it, but they just have access to that image and, and do the matching and stuff momentarily in, in, within that transaction. But that's really what that consent is. So now when we go start, um, we choose to say the uh, continue on mobile, and that's the step here, guys. You're welcome to scan this, the barcode, and you'll see how it works on you. You can, you can play with it yourself now. And uh, if you have your passport, remember we asked you to bring your passport with you, that's, you, you will need the passport. So it starts with the passport, and that's where the authentication happens and make sure it's clear that you've mentioned before, Danny, as well as uh, then it goes, okay, take a live selfie, but you can see you have to move the phone around to make sure it understand the room and the environment around you to make sure this is not a, a photo of your, of your face, meaning you are present in the room. You are the person who is submitting this, uh, um, this, this form, this application. It's all done live. It's all done live authenticating your photo ID, as well as taking a live uh, multi-dimension photo of your face and matching the two happens live. That means you cannot not be in the room, it's not someone who's been you know, hijacked under duress or something and taking a document from them and, and doing this. You have to be in the room doing it yourself. This is really, really important. And also a question from Brendan. Are the ID documents stored in a Martian Logic somewhere for the company to pull and save on a personal file? The ID documents that mm -hmm. we collect? Very good question. I genuinely uh, apologize. I can't remember from the compliance point of view and you know the privacy and stuff. I, I clearly remember how it works from the results point of view. Uh, you know, the report, clearly we understand the management of that. Uh, those documents, whether we make them available to you or whether they are just strictly for the purpose of this. I doubt that you'll have access to them, but I'll come back to you. Clearly, we would love to if if that adds value to you and we're allowed to do it. Of course, it's a good idea and we don't have any technology limitations, but I genuinely don't know the legal obligations about that. I'll, we'll come back to you, man. It's a good question. Hmm. Um, looks like everyone probably tried the QR code, so I'll just finish the step myself. Um, just scan the QR code. Guys, anybody still want to have a play with it before we move to the next uh, the next step? So you just have to just zoom on it maybe a little bit on the screen and scan it with your uh, with your phone. You'll be able to have a play with how it works. But you need to, as I said, you need to have your passport uh, handy. Anybody's having a go at it, guys? Any feedback from anyone? No? Okay, very good. Let's go to the next step then. Thanks. Sir. Okay, I'll scan my ID. I scanned it. So this. Oh, somebody tried to QR code it. Yeah, she got it now. Uh, probably, she can't probably use it anymore because I uploaded it. I don't know if she can still use it. That's okay. We've got, we've got to keep going now. Yep. Okay. So that's done. I'll go to the next step. So this is the last step. That's the uh, informed consent, guys. 
you can see us on the left hand side will always be the case the accredited body but the legal entity on the left that will be dynamic so you the client whoever you you are that would be your information there so when we are saying to the user as you can see here they're ticking the box they're saying i am fred and i agree and consent to martian logic collecting information and storing information and for the client which is the lec the legal entity um, client to see the results etc it's all there so we're it's very very clear page they have to tick and they still have to sign as well yep. Hold on. and if the um based on the information that we have we can understand that this person is under 18 another signing will come up for the guardian uh, mm -hmm. that they have to sign up another signature box come up we don't have to ask them we know if they are under 18 or not my goodness we have access to their passport and driving <laughs> license and it doesn't get more intimate than that oh my goodness so yeah um so we we immediately know okay look you're under 18 and uh, uh you, you should uh you should get uh, your legal guardian to to sign parents or legal guardian mm -hmm. cool okay i'm gonna submit done that's it for the candidate point of view okay beautiful so what happens here uh our support guys i don't know some if you can uh, uh that page is still not ready but if you can bring it up somehow yep so this information now this this application will go in the queue for our support system we have about seven eight people there who are mending that that queue and it gets assigned to someone and they have to go into it and still uh so so far i'm not sure if any of you is uh has been doing the police check manually and they understand the steps needed which is the collect verify compare sorry link and compare so so far we've done the three the collect the verify and the link the linkage the compare now happens with our support folks where they have to check the name and last name at a minimum at all the documents the four documents as well as what they typed through the form so five places it's all matched as well as we they have the ability to use the uh, dvs database the national database to validate uh, every single document that was passed through and to make sure they can read it properly and look at the authentication of it does it look authentic we have to do all that so it takes probably about two to three minutes because we built that tech for them to be very convenient you just do this do this do this it's a no-brainer they should be able to do it within probably two three minutes and if it's all good then they submit it to the MPCS. So that's that's how much work that has to be done before we're comfortable to send it to the MPCS. Because as I said, we are taking the responsibility, legal responsibility that we've ID'd that person. Meaning at high level, this person is actually who they are claiming to be. That's on us. So all the four steps required, the collect, verify, um, link and compare, these are that's the fourth step that's the last one that's when we are comfortable that now we can uh, submit that to the mpcs to say it's actually fred we believe it is fred and please give us uh do a police check for fred or on fred does that make sense guys just in terms of what i've just said the four steps and what we are doing because you know it's really important you know i had some clients and the, the most amazing clients actually you know almost i call them friends but they said oh and well we just pay 17 dollars and i why are you going to charge us 45 dollars if we buy a pack let's say 500 and uh, they didn't realize that i'm taking I'm, I'm i'm saving them about three hours per check that's like 75 that's like 150 dollars so now what they think it's 17 dollars is actually 180 dollars so we are actually a lot cheaper I mean, that's my own logic. I'm sure you, you guys are highly intelligent people and you can disagree with me, but that's how I personally, as a business person, uh, see it. Uh, it takes a lot of time, unless you're not compliant with all due respect. I'm happy to say that you would not be compliant. And that is a huge risk. Millions of dollars of fines you're opening yourself to. If you're not doing enough to ID the person, any of these steps not done in the right order, et cetera, et cetera. We just have a couple of questions. Uh, first one from Brendan. Can I just say on that one? Sorry, sorry Jess. Sorry, yep. Please don't forget that that thought. Oh, sure. Brendan, I'll remind you even. Just on that thought, to give you an idea, if you're going to be doing the ID in yourself, there is no way 
you're going to be compliant unless the person comes into the office and you see them and you look at the documents and you say, yep, cool. Unless you want to send them to a pharmacist or someone to do the same. But can you see what I mean? The time it takes to coordinate all that and their time and your time and, and all this. Otherwise, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not compliant. It's a major problem. Cool. Very good. Um, so Brendan was just wondering, uh, does the employer receive a confirmation email when the candidate has completed? Um, 100%. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a host of things. You know, first of all, we want to, um, uh, you know, for every step, and this is a, a, a clearly a, a, a big step, but every we're going to break down the, st the process into pretty much like 15 steps. At high level, there's the three stages. It's with the candidate, um, you know, meaning the candidate started doing it and, and they are doing it and we will be able to even break it down which step they've completed. And then it's with Martian team yeah and it's with the mpcs you will know about all of that and we're going to break it down even every stage those high level stages they or milestone as call them they will be even broken down into uh, you know more granular statuses if you like um we haven't done that work yet we do we do have more the high level stuff we let you know where it's at but we're going to provide even more information but in terms of notification there'll be three three types of course the email but also in the system the push notification what we call you know when you get the little notification with a disc with even some some chiming music or something like that sound to know that you know there's something that happened here uh, and we will use it for both the reference check the police check uh, to push that into the browser so you know oh i've got something here um as well as you know um what's the third way of notifying you I don't know if it escaped me now, but yeah, but most certainly that's really, really important. Um, and, and you know, your your um, dashboard will, will also, you know, available for you if you refresh the dashboard, it's going to show you exactly where everything is at. And you can have very snappy filters to be able to show, show me the ones with, with Martian, show me the ones with, uh, with the candidate, show me how many haven't even begun. The candidate hasn't touched yet, hasn't opened, hasn't clicked on the link. So you'll be able to see them broken down by those. Uh, milestones super quickly. That's really important. Very good. Um, we have another one from Chantel. What if they don't have a parent or legal guardian at the time? Mm. Can they submit or do they need to wait until they have somebody to sign? Okay, so you clearly work with, you know, you've got some uh, workforce under 18, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it is a big issue out there, like, you know, McDonald's of the world. I'm sorry to say that, but <laughs> just McDonald's is a typical company when it comes to that space. But there's an amazing, lots of great Australian companies as well that do that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we we thought about it. If you can educate us a little bit about this, and we will clear it with Aki. But we we thought, you know, if you're under 18, the chances are you're not really, very rarely someone under 18 and not living at home. But to your point, parents maybe the legal guardian parent mm -hmm. is traveling for work, for holidays, and maybe they're staying with the uncle or so. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. How does it work? Can you educate us a little bit about this? And is that is that a, a, a fringe case or is that fairly common? Is that like one in a million or fairly common? Well, what we're waiting for her answer, uh, basically, they can come back anytime they like. So if they sign it, if they don't have a parent guide next to them, Ah, is that what you mean? Oh, oh. They can oh. always stop it. That actually goes back to Danny's yep. question. Uh, can the candidate get part way through that? Yes. Way? Yeah, they yes. can always stop yes. and come back anytime, and every yes. progress will be saved. Every Thank progress. you, Sung. If I may just explain what Sung said, it's life saving. That link, they can go back to that email to that link, save the link, or go back to the email. As long as they can go back to that link, we take them back and every single thing they typed is saved to the last thing. We It's life-saving and they can just continue from there. Yeah, she says. And Sung, how many, what's the expiry? How many days or whatever, what's the a default expiry of the link? Oh, it's pretty long, but I I've honestly don't remember. And this, uh, I, no I don't problems. remember from But that's life. something we need to think about, Sung. You know, we can't make it 100 days. I think it shouldn't be more than a week. Oh, perhaps, yeah, like it's that. probably like seven days. Yeah. It's not that long. Well, We'll look into that, but yeah, certainly they can go back within the expiry, uh, uh, you know, period. They can go back to that link as many times as they want and continue from there. Oh, 
and this is uh, on to Danny's as well, who asked the question. Uh, if the candidate gets halfway through the application and stops, mm. does the system send automatic reminders asking the candidate to complete it? We haven't done that yet, but certainly great point. Thank you. We will definitely, we're just trying to get the, the um, you know, yeah. the core offering, if you like, going. All, all these bells and whistles and beautiful features will come through, but this this is a great point. You know, uh, you know, as per the, a couple of people have mentioned right now, the worry about the candidate um, forgetting or not be bothered or whatever. We want to really make sure, uh, the, in other words, the conversion rate or the completion rate, mm. any effort to use the technology to help with that conversion rate, that completion rate, is something we would and love to be able like to do. setting it inspiring like we do with the onboarding packs, right? 100%. Yes. That's a good point as well, yeah. Jess. Yeah. So what Jess is saying, you know how we scare people on the onboarding pack by giving them an expiry date of two days or three days and a bit like when you're booking a, uh, an airline ticket yeah. and they put the fear of God into you to make sure you get your credit card and, and book it. We do that for the onboarding. Jess is saying we could do that here as well. It makes sense as well. There's a lot, a lot of these good ideas will start to emerge. We just want to get the compliance ready and that is what's being scaring us the legal aspect of it, make sure we're doing a really good job for, for everyone um, on, on that. And, you know, being clean for the candidate, modern and works on mobile. And that, that's sort of the, the top priorities yeah. at the moment. And do we have a um, turnaround time for when the documents and everything comes through? Uh, from our point of view, it will not be more than half an hour before it's on its way. Okay. When it comes to us, we've got seven people looking at that queue. It takes two or three minutes per check really not a big deal because of the tech and all that. Um, now, what happens once it's submitted to the uh, portal, that doesn't change. We, no one has control over that. Okay, so they don't have the time. Yeah, so that is the same yeah. to what you guys are familiar with. You, you probably would know about this more than me, guys. You've okay. been using it, you know. So whether you're going through a partner just like us, so we, we work directly with the government just like any provider on the market. We're second to none. We're equal partner, we're accredited, yeah? So whether you've done it yourself or you've gone through a partner like us, one, once it's lodged to the MPCS, that's all the same. We're all equal then. Yeah. That's the God. We're all equal unto God. <laughs> <laughs> so whether that is, and to be honest, you know, as you know, typically it's about 24 hours from what I know. When it becomes complicated, if when they have to contact different states because of where they lived or because maybe there's something that popped up in one state and the communications between different departments. In As I understand, about 20, 25% of the time, it, it could go beyond that 24 hour mark. But as I said, you know, I'm not taking any credits for it or anything. That's nothing to do with us and no one can control that. Yeah, cool, that's good. So we can continue, Sam. Um, that's pretty much it for the whole flow. Um, so once it's been verified from us and once we get the result from M um, the government, we let you know it and you can see the result. Okay. Um, beautiful. So the, uh, we want to clean up that, uh, the, um, uh, this dashboard and, and, uh, uh, you know, provide colors about statuses and snappy filters and notifications and stuff like that. That's what we will be uh, focusing on for the next few days. Uh, but this will be open by Wednesday or Thursday for business. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, we can talk about the pricing, uh, perhaps now, unless you still have any questions about the tech and the legal stuff, guys. Let me know if you're okay for me to talk about the pricing and explain how it works. I think there was just one question. Mm -hmm. that we didn't get to uh -huh. and it was what if you review the id and the candidate is not who they say they are will you notify the employer and what is the process after that well it's a very good question i genuinely can't remember um if we're not satisfied that this is the person who they're claiming to be um where does this go i i really need to come back to you just from a legal point of view mm -hmm. from the tech point of view it's really not an issue um I, I'm, I'm, that's a million dollar question. Let me just make sure I write it down personally as well. That was from Danny as well. Thank you, Danny. Where's Danny from? Uh, what, what, from which client are you uh, from, Danny? Birdman. Then? Sorry? Birdman? Broadman? Bergman? Birdman. Yeah. <laughs> Birdman, what do you guys do? What does Birdman do, Danny? School, yeah. Ah, oh. uh, Bergman Anglican School. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if all our clients know schools are our top categories. We've got about 65 private um, schools that use the platform. 
So um, that's a lot of, uh, you know, um, constitu constituency. <laughs> Uh, Daddy says we used to work together when I was at AIS, so we know this. She knows the system well. Okay, <laughs> beautiful, fantastic. So thank you for your contribution today as well, Danny. I'm just I've written it down personally and uh, make sure we get on top of it. Great point. Okay, guys, um, are you happy now for me to talk about the pricing? I mean, really, not much. Really, we're going to talk about the key thing about the pricing is for you to understand what we are doing. So if we say to you it's twenty five dollars, or we say to you it's hundred dollars which is not the case as you know the top 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 money is going to be around 52 but nevertheless whether it's 25 or whether it's 52 um you know why um we needed to understand what we are doing the cost to us in other words to make sure it's as quick and po as possible that's that's the two uh, um at high level i guess uh, um the drivers that we have to you know create a balance between how quickly we can do it swiftly and quickly for you to get the results so you can keep going with the recruitment process but at the same time to make sure we're compliant so you don't get in trouble we don't get in trouble um, and that's why there's a contract between us and ACIC and contract between us and you guys um, and so the point of id in the person once you've signed that contract with us once you're using the platform we have taken this responsibility so it's a lot of work and we're a company and we've got 20 different shareholders and a board and we have to make sure we do it in a way that we are taking no risk. Every step of those four steps, which is the collection, the verification, the linkage, the linkage is done by the, the biometric, meaning to link the face to the photo ID and then eventually the, um, um, the comparison to compare that all the documents, first of all, we are citing them citing the images to make sure we can see them and they look authentic and linking uh comparing the names on all the documents as well there the form it's all it's all good we have all these steps have to be completed before and also we're checking the uh validity of those uh, documents using the dvs as well so we're sending about three to four requests to the dvs for these documents with the ideas and stuff to say yep there's a document valid with that number for that person mm -hmm. all that has to be done so that's where why we need that margin. It's very, very open uh, to the public knowledge that it's $17 to the government's going to go to ACIC no matter who's doing it, right? Once you sub to submit it through the portal or the API, it's the same thing, whether you're doing it from the web interface or how we do it via the API, it's $17. So if we're charging you $50, it's all in the, in the public eyes very clear. That means our margin is $23, but you need to realize why we're charging that $23. That's where the cost is going. It's the technology that we built. Yeah. And to continue to maintain that technology, the developers that need to maintain that technology and um, the rest of the cost, et cetera. Um, and, and our people that still need to do sort of manual intervention to a certain degree uh, as well. That's why, why we were, and, and clearly the whole risk and we need to make profit for our shareholders as well. That's where that $23 is going. It's, there's really nothing to hide here. It's it's a very simple process. It's yeah. it's not much to it. We have a manual about 600 pages. If you're interested, and in, I can share it about the compliance and it explains those steps. And I'm pretty sure it's it's available on public eye if you look for it. Manual, ACI compliance, police check, you know, nationally coordinated uh, criminal history check, etc. You'll find the manual anyway. So it's all public information, what we need to do, and, and therefore you can, in your head, imagine where that cost is. There's really nothing to hide here, guys. So that's the key thing here. And as I mentioned, it's going to be for a single check about $52. And then when you start to buy packs in 5, 10, 20, whatever the, those packs that we'll provide, it's in the email that I sent you. It's probably accurate enough in terms of what those packs are. I don't want to make it more than 10 packs. It's just two, 10 different types of packs or sizes just too confusing um so starting with uh, with um five let's say and uh, uh, the biggest is i don't know maybe a thousand or, or two thousand uh, so 10 different sizes um the cheapest will probably get to i don't know whether we end up with 39 dollars or maybe 42 dollars. we're still finalizing that but really there's, there's really not much to it 
So between 52 and between, let's say, you know, $40, depending on the size of the pack. So you're purchasing that pack. And one of the features that will be coming through, uh, guys, as well, to enable you to still use our technology, but uh, get the candidate to pay for it or the employee. So, you know, that pop-up that comes up at the very beginning that says, uh, you know, is that for the purpose of employment or volunteers and the location, blah, 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 if, when you're initiating the, the, uh, the process, there'll be an overarching um, a drop down right at the top to say, look, is that for the, um, thank you, son, right at the top there above everything that says, are you paying for it or is the candidate paying for it? Mm. So if you choose the candidate paying for it, that means we don't charge you for it. It doesn't come off your um, your uh, plan, your um, uh, pack. Uh, and the candidate will be asked before they begin to, you know, to, to interact with the submission process. They, uh, they have to provide their credit card details and pay for it, you know, $50 or whatever it is, and then they can continue. So that option will come in uh, uh, very, very quickly. Any questions on the pricing or the pricing model or the pack system, if you're happy with the pack system? So you'll be able to do it just one at a time or start to purchase packs of 5, 10, 20, whatever that is, as per the email that I've sent you guys. Yeah. So when will we, uh, Jess is just asking when we will we have the final figures for the larger pack? Um, if you're interested, flick me an email, but we will get them finalised by end of tuesday next week at the latest but um if you really want to find out right now I'm, I'm, i'll send you something just for you guys I'll, I'll provide you with the you know today if you like with um uh, i'll send you a quote if you like for you guys but we'll make that available on tuesday Good. she says yeah happy to wait till tuesday it's fine beautiful yeah um Okay. I, I'm very happy with how much we've covered and really thank you for your questions, guys. There was at least four questions that were very, very solid and we learned from them. So thank you. We appreciate it. Um, I'm not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry, but I'm just mindful that it's 12 o'clock because we promised to keep it at an hour. But if anybody still has anything, I um, can stay for the next even half an hour. As a matter of fact, while you've got me, guys, if you're not happy with anything at all, about the platform by any means or you have any questions doesn't have to be at the police check i'm more than happy to stay on for the next hour even um if you feel that you need a refresher training i'm offering it for free to any of our clients of any size a one hour training with our top managers the product managers like ben or lewis or chris will do a one hour with the team and you guys prepare questions um not about things that maybe you think is not working or anything like that but how you fine tune it how you can probably configure it better how you can take advantage of all these features that would be rolling out i'm referring to features that are free meaning you're already paying for them but probably you haven't adopted them we're happy to do a session that covers all of the above so q a if you like with the team completely free just get in touch with me i'll assign a product manager to talk to you and organize a time that works for you and we do actually have a couple, two other questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one from Brendan. Our org chart completes checks every three years. Would there be a way to do this without needing the employee to go through all the steps again? Uh, did you say org chart? Org chart. Um, so our org complete. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Organization. <laughs> um, our terminology here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, we... Our org organization completes checks every three years. Yes. Would there be a way to do this without needing the employer to go through all the steps again? Whoa, well, I, I, to my knowledge, you've got to do all this again. Um, it, it's a good point, though. It's a good point. I would, I, I will bring it up with the with the folks at Akik, but. I, I have a feeling that uh, when you say all the steps, I mean, you know, do you mean like uh, all the documents and, and the addresses and all that, you know, that could take, you know, potentially up to 10 minutes. Is that what you're referring to? It is a bit daunting. I, I, I understand. It's a, yeah, I'm just making sure you understand. we're on the same page, yeah? Said, yeah? All right, all right. Process. I see what you mean. I know what you mean. I, I just can't see how they would accept it how this can be you know they're all necessary um 
Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to check. I'm happy to check. But that never came up in all the conversations with ACIC in the last three years. It, it's never come up that this process can be, you know, in a sense, um, uh, uh, what's the pro, what, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, uh, expedited in a sense or shortened because uh, we know the person. It's Yeah, it, it's interesting. I'll bring it up. Yeah, and he, uh, Brendan just said at the moment they don't need to. It's just a recheck using their initial report. That's how it's working for them right now. Recheck the initial report. Well, mm -hmm. um, what do you mean, uh, recheck the initial report? You you mean using the the old report as the basis of knowing who that person is and saying, look, is there anything on that person? We've already done the check mm -hmm. on them. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what mean. Interesting. 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 There might be something there. Mm. There might be something there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll definitely bring it up. It's a very good point. I mean, clearly we want it to be the quickest possible. Mm. Um, yeah, it is a bit of a daunting process, unfortunately, when you're dealing with things like that. Yeah. Especially if you have like a large amount of people that you yeah. have to keep doing yeah. revised checks. Yeah. yeah, it makes it a lot quicker and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps from our point of view, because we're not doing all that work, we can make it cheaper. Yeah. So our margin will be halved or, or anything. Yeah. You know, so instead of paying 50, you you're probably, yeah, you're yeah. probably paying only maybe 30. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. It, it, it. it would be even more profitable for us, to be honest. Uh, it is very expensive to do all that ID in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great point. I'm going to write it down here personally. Thanks, Brendan. And we have another one from Rani. I just have to write that down. Okay, sorry. Very good. All right. Um, so Rani says, oh, let's <laughs> just go to this one. Um, Rani says, we have some staff who only have an Australian citizenship or birth certificate, uh, can submit their bills, water, electricity sometimes, and do an electoral enrollment to get their citizenship identified. So it's all other ways to get their identity mm. um, yeah. identified. He's yeah. just asking, how can the system identify by their face? When no face ID was provided, I, I don't think we can do it. Mm. I don't think you can do it. Um, you, you will need a photo ID of some yeah. kind. So those options that we started with, you know, the drop down. Sung, are you able to get to those options, Bud? Yes, sure. Thank uh, you. you. You got the question, yeah? Yeah, I got the question. I can even answer that without showing it, but um, yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, we might be only catering for I don't know. I'm just going to say whether it's 95 percent or whether it's 99 or whether it's 90 of your um of the workforce out there uh but but certainly there's minimum you know information and documents that we need mm -hmm. in order for us to, to to be in a position to id the person Okay, so we start with these options. So just to make sure the option you're referring to would be Australian with no passport. Is that correct? Sorry, Sang, before you go forward. Mm -hmm. Who's the lady we're talking uh, to? So it's Rani. Oh, Rani. Yeah. Rani, uh, is that, that would be the option that, uh, uh, that you're referring to, correct? All right, so let's go next and let's see what's uh, possible to use. So here, you will need one of those, unfortunately. They will need one of those. So let's choose one of them. Wh which one would be, Ronnie, any of them would be applicable here or or the problem is right there, that's that's it, they can't continue? From just, her question, she said they have all other Australian citizenship or birth certificates. So this yeah, one should be fine. Said anyone would be good. So okay. Anyone will okay, okay, yeah. we'll work with that case, cool. So in here then, um, we need the, the birth, so they do have the birth certificate, okay, cool. The reason we're taking details like that about the birth certificate is because we are doing uh, online under the hoods, uh, communicate with the DVS and making sure it's we have a document that is in a database and it's valid, not just collecting the picture of it. 
cool. So now when it when it says done, that means that the two things are happened. We have uh, a photo uploaded and the DVS system says, yep, there's a valid document in our database uh, with those details. Okay, so now we're here. Is that a problem now, Rami? Is that you're saying they won't have either of those? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they'll have like um, water bills and electricity. So they'll do that kind of. Mm. That no, it won't. It won't work. Mm. The Australian photo ID, uh, Sung, is that something? What is that again? That's just the state ID. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they could. So Rami, they could acquire one of those. Anybody can acquire one of those fairly quickly. I'm not sure how long it takes, but I, I guess they would have to get one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, he's saying some don't have photo ID to be able to scan. Sure, sure. But that Australian photo ID, are they, Rami, in your opinion, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely asking you guys know more than me about these kind of details. But as I understand, uh, this is something that you can acquire. Anybody can acquire. It's a state-based ID. Uh, I've never seen one personally. I've got a driving license, but... It's some kind of I don't know. It, it's it's an ID from the state uh, about you, similar to driving license, but has got the same weight, but it doesn't allow you to drive. Yeah. So I guess they might have to wait for a few days until they get this. Is that is that too much to ask for, or would they? You would, based on your information, people will have it because they know they need something like that for various different legal things around the the country, and you would think they would have it if they. If there's any reason why they can't have a driving license and no and no passport mm -hmm. i don't know i really don't know i'm just asking you guys yeah the also the problem is the utility bills like water and electricity that's they can, can cannot be used as a commencement or primary document that's a secondary yeah. document yeah it's just not compliant yeah. it's not really us you know at the very beginning you remember those four documents when we list them in terms of uh, what are they again, Sung? Do you remember? Commencement document, um, primary document, and two secondary documents. Yeah, in okay. terms of what qualifies to be called those categories, you know, that's what I mean. They're missing on that. They just cannot do a police check, in our opinion. If you do it, if they do it somehow, it's illegal. That means that they haven't been ID'd properly. Mm. Yeah, all good. Cool, cool. All right. Um, any other question, guys? That's it. Okay, we'll we'll wrap it up then. Thank you very much, uh, guys. As I said, amazing questions, um, and I hope it's been informative. Um, if you have any any questions whatsoever, pricing anything, uh, by any means, contact me directly. Contact Jess. Contact support. Um, anybody in, in the company and we'll take care of it for you. Thank you for your time and your contribution, guys. A great contribution today. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.